Hi. Uh, welcome to Indexes of PostgreSQL Talk. <laughs> I'm Emra Segeli. I um, work for an online gaming company called InnoGames. It's a company based in Hamburg, and we build, make free-to-play games like Forge of Empires. Maybe you have played before. And we use PostgreSQL for the games. And I'm going to talk about the indexes of PostgreSQL in general, how to make use of them, what are the advantages and disadvantages of particular indexes. So let's start. That's the create index statement. You have probably seen in the documentation before. I guess everybody have dealt with indexes at some point, or at least B3. Like, so that's how you create indexes. Um, there is very useful concurrent the keyword that um, adds the index without um, blocking the table. It's a little more expensive than normal index, and it, it doesn't work in transactions, so it remains a broken index if, if it fails for some reason. Not valid index, you have to drop it manually. And um, indexes support multi-column. Uh, that there is a using keyword which is which matters for us in this talk because I'm going to talk about the built-in index access methods. That's here how you specify. The B3 is the default, so if you haven't ever used it before, you are using B3. <laughs> That's easy. And there are a bunch of other things. There is um, collation, there is a scanning, discanning, where to put nulls. Do you know where, where we have it? Do you know why we have um, a scanning and discanning option in create index statement? Does anybody ever wonder that? It's no. I mean, all databases have it. Even even MySQL or MongoDB have a scanning and discanning indexes. There should be a reason. For cluster. Yeah, makes sense. Well, any any other reason? I haven't thought. That one before, that's nice. <laughs> and they are, um, no one else, before I, I tell other more important reasons, I, I, I hope more important to create, uh, to use those. Yes, please. Yes, that, 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 that's, I, I hear more often and I, I have um, also heard some discussions, discussions that if it would be really helpful or not, but in, maybe in a micro-optimization sense, there's uh, some optimizations that apply when you are scanning the index in the right order, but normally it shouldn't be a problem because you can scan B3 in both ways. The, the real reason appears when you have multiple columns in the index and when you are using the index on the order by statement. Then if you are ordering by in, the, in those two columns, in incompatible order to the index, B3 doesn't become useful because it's, you can't go from any sites if, you, if the columns are not correlating. So if you have just one column, the ordering wouldn't matter, but if you have two, then ordering between those two matters. And there is also table space option, which can be useful if you have different table spaces putting indexes to faster random access disks, for example. And where predicate, I, I will also show examples about those. And by the way, you can ask questions anytime. I would be glad if you ask, or if you have questions about those. There's similarly drop index statement. There's also concurrent the keyword, because dropping indexes also for small time locks the table. This avoids that. And yeah. And there's re-index with no concurrent keyword, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and re-index, you would need it if, you, if there's, there are problems with the indexes, um, like index bloat, for example. If you are, uh, it, it can sometimes happen, uh, for example, if you are um, systematically deleting 90% uh, of a table, then it's likely that your B3 index will get bloated because there is no possibility of cleaning the pages in between when you do something like that, then you would need re-index, and there is no concurrently, it's like, it can be 
uh, frustrating to do. There is a one workaround to use drop index and create index statements uh, with concurrently, but it doesn't always work, especially if your index is, is primary key and other foreign keys are depending on it. But I, I believe some people are working on implementing re-index concurrently. I hope we will have it in the future versions. Mm. There are very useful expression indexes on PostgreSQL. Have you ever seen or used expression indexes? May, may I see who whom know, knows, already knows about that to, to get a general idea about it? If you haven't used those, um, you, I, I mean, you are missing a lot of things. It's, they are very useful. If um, it, you can basically apply any, con not any condition, but um, operations which, uh, which are safe to, um, before indexing um, the value. And uh, those indexes are going to be used when the conditions are exactly matching with the indexed expressions. There, there are some annoying parser properties that requires additional parentheses in some cases. But for example, let's assume listed at column in here is um, a timestamp column, but you are only searching in dates or mostly searching in the date part, then you can create an index like this. This would be, make smaller index than indexing timestamp. And um, more importantly, it would match with your queries exactly. It's another very useful one is um, on PostgreSQL, there is no uh, case insensitive collations or something like this, and, uh, p but it's often required. So the common workaround is to uh, index the column using the lower function. Uh, you can also use those indexes as unique index, so that would make sure your name column is case insensitive unique. Uh, I more, most often I go even further and create that unaccent extension and use um, both of them together. Unaccent extension is a very practical extension uh, that changes the accented characters in various European languages to Unicode alternatives. It's like, I don't know what, what accented characters are there in Italian. Yes, please. It, the, during creating the index, of course, the database has to uh, execute this expression and uh, then index the values. And then it, it wouldn't affect the performance. It's, it, it would be normal index matching. It's, uh, on, on some uh, cases, the values which are gathered from index needs to be recalculated because indexes don't, can't return exact results. But this wouldn't be any worse than not having index on those expressions. Um, I was asking if there are any accented characters in Italian. I, I, I believe I have seen E with some character on that. This extension would turn it to normal E. It's, I don't know how correct is that. For German, it's not correct, for example, because when you have E, this extension change, changes it to O, but according to the German rules, it has to be O, E, so it's probably not so useful for German. But well, it's, it's, it, it has to do for some language. And there is where clause on indexes to, to only index some part of the table, if you are not using those, you are also missing a lot. You, Juden also mentioned those in, in his talk. Uh, it's like something like this I, I very often encounter on the indexing products which are available. Some people like to store deleted junk data on their tables. It's very common database modeling practice. For some reason, I don't really know. But those indexes become very helpful. You can also make sure it's unique. So if, if you are using the stock ID again for products which are not available anymore, then you can still make sure the available ones are unique using that. It, it also makes the index smaller, and you only index the values you need. And the condition in here is that the, uh, the var condition has to be in the queries if, for that index to be considered. 
And the planner is a little bit clever about that. It's, for example, if you have greater than or less than operators, if you index the values greater than zero, it would recognize when you are searching for values greater than one. But it's don't expect too much. It can do in some extent. Before 9.6, those partial indexes were not considered to for index-only scans, which was a major limitation in my, op in my opinion. One of the nice features in 9.6 would be that restriction is lifted, so they will become even more useful. Any questions about those? No? So, index access nodes. On PostgreSQL, all indexes are um, outside the table, outside the original table data. It's not like, none, none of the indexes influence where the data is put in the table. Um, and uh, the indexes are used to access the data in a faster way. If you don't have any ind indexes, the database has to scan all table. If you have some, then it can use them in, in different ways. Those are the three ways that are available. Um, index only scan, scans the index, finds the values which matches the condition, and then finds the uh, actual rows in the table one by one and return those values. So that means a lot of random access, and that would only be a viable option if your index is very selective or you need the values to be ordered. Something like um, gave me for top 10 rows in this table. And then when, when you have less selective clause, bitmap index can, um, can be used. It, it finds all the matching uh, rows from the index first, and then puts them to a bitmap, finds the matching pages in the table, and then grabs those rows from the table. When, when it does that, it, it minimizes disk access, the access to the table, but then you lose the order information, and moreover, it, it would match with the um, rows in those pages, uh, which might not be uh, true, depending on the index, so the condition has to be re-executed. Uh, and some index access methods we are going to talk about only works for some methods and some not. For example, Gin can never support index-only scan. Index-only scan, as you can guess from its name, is a method which um, works by only by the values which are on the index, so no need to access to the original table. It only works if you, are, if you don't need those values. So if you write select star, most likely you will never see that. But if you are having a count, query or if you only need the values which are on the index, then uh, it can be selected. It's also ordered, similar to index scan, but some index access methods can never use it because they don't have the actual value on the index. They, they are lossy. Any questions about those? Okay. So those are the index access met methods I'm going to talk about. B3, the default one, GIST, SPGIST, GIN, and BRIN. Those are the index access methods in core. There's also hash, um, but it's not, it has a lot of problems and um, it, it haven't got much love in the last 20 years as far as I know. It's, they are not crash safe and um, they are not um, as efficient as they could be. So most often even and, and hash function using the expression indexes over B3 performs better than the hash index. But they, they could have been much better. I believe um, some people are also working on that for the next release. I hope we will have proper hash indexes one day. But for now, the best advice is to don't use them. Forget about it. <laughs> and uh, what about others? Does anyone is using gist indexes? Ca can I see? Cool. And Jin? Even more. A SPGIST? I don't expect too much. Okay. And Brin is the new one on 9.5. It's, yeah. Cool. So I, I will briefly talk about all those. B3 is, I, 
guess everybody is familiar with how B3 is like. It's uh, basically putting the values um, in an order to a tree like this. It's the default um, index. It's the only option if you need the index to be the primary key or the unique key. Um, it's fast, it's well optimized for most use cases. It's most people um, mostly care about B3. Um, so it's, yeah, it's often a good choice. It supports multiple columns. When you have multiple columns, then it would be like B3s under B3s. So column order matters a lot. Uh, and those operators are supported by B3, less than, greater than. So the, the things, you, and, and it supports order by. Have you ever seen those weird operators? Anybody? By, by mistake or like, <laughs> Sorry? Ah, cool. <laughs> nice. Then second quadrant courses, we can tell, go really deep into the indexes, hmm? probably. So they, it, they are special indexes to implement indexing over like clause. It's a database, B3 indexes can be used when you have a like clause and uh, no uh, matching in the beginning of the value as you, you are seeing in this example. And normal greater than, and, uh, than, than the pl planner or rewriter translates this um, expression the, into those two, which are indexable operators. Um, the reason of doing so instead of um, doing it um, like normal greater than and less than operators is in the complicated ordering rules in the languages. It's, uh, if, if I will give another example from German language, as they, they are um, translating those umlauts to, for example, ö to o, e, uh, they also require ö and o, e, to be sorted in the same place when you are sorting the values. So if you have German collation in your database, they would be sorted like this. PostgreSQL respects the sorting rules of the language. And because of that, index is, is also sorted in, in this way. And um, it then can't be used for like clause. So you need a different index for that. Or you have to use um, the C collation on your index, then your index can be used for like clause. So normally, in an, in an Unicode database, indexes wouldn't be used in a like condition like that. If you want them to be used, you either need to create them with Unicode collation, or you need to use different operator class. These we call operator classes. They are different than the index access methods. They let you choose different implementation of an access method. As you see in here, there are multiple ways of using B3 on default PostgreSQL. If you don't want the default, you have to provide the method um, you want, the operator class. Any questions about those? Yes, please. or this operator class. You, you, uh, both works. C collation is probably a better idea because then it can also um, works for the conditions which, um, which is searching in C, C collation. Yes. Yeah, collations are a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, this one is, I think, implemented this operator class before PostgreSQL had per column collation support. Uh, but it's still useful because 
this index can be used for equality even with collations. Because for equality, it's also good enough. It doesn't matter how you order the rows, you just search for one. Anyway. Then I'm, I'm going to skip. I, I think it's very easy to talk a lot about B3, but I, I want to tell you about all the other operator classes we have too. So there is gist. And this is, by the way, I, I got the examples from Heiki Linekarka, some slides, he, 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 he were giving indexes talk and examples were very good and he told me, use them however you like, it's so nice of him and yeah, it's, so to explain, we, we have range types on PostgreSQL with a start point and end point. The common example is the bookings of a meeting room, for example, then you have them in your table and we want to index those. One strategy would be uh, to sort them by the start time of the um, ranges. Then they would look like that. But how you are searching is you actually want uh, to get the ranges which overlap with the range you, wa you want. And this one doesn't really help because you order by the minimum, so you skip those in the, in the beginning of the um, tree but you still have to search for all the others. We could do the opposite and sort them by their end dates, or we could do both with B3, but it, it, it still doesn't work. It's, it's still not efficient as it could be. So how actually we like to put those ranges is to have something like this. It's grouping them in, into clusters. Then it, it works very well. You exactly match with the part you are you are searching for. These indexes are very useful for geological data. It's to search for points in the space, or um, they have some implementations for text search that you, you can use, um, and ranges, at, um, IP addresses. I have implemented IP address um, for GIST indexes that can be useful. Uh, and this is a kind of different tree structure. It's, I, I, I haven't told you about, B3 is an order, uh, is a balanced tree. So tree is always balanced. GIST is also a balanced tree, but in balanced in a different way. There are multiple places a range can go in, a, in an index like this. So it's, it's not, sometimes not optimal. If you are having many duplicates, then index the values will match in many different places in the tree, and it index might not be very useful. It supports these operators as an example. It's those um, access methods are extensible, so you can support any data type and any operator um, with those. And GIST is also particularly useful for uh, what we call nearest neighbor search. So when you have points in like that, and um, you want for points which are closest to you, uh, GIST can be used to, to get those. That, that's a very useful feature. H have you seen that one before? The nearest neighbor search? It's, if, if you are um, dealing with geometries or, um, it, it's also quite useful for um, text similarity matching. Get me the similar uh, strings in that column. Works in similar way. And GIST indexes are also very useful for those exclusion constraints. Exclusion constraints are a generalized version of unique keys. It's like the unique keys, but works with other operators than equality. So you tell, for example, make sure the IP address networks in this table never overlaps with each other using the GIST index. Or make sure that nobody is booking the same meeting room in the same time. Using the indexes, you can um, in e efficiently provide those constraints. And next, space partition GIST, SP GIST. It's a generalized inverted search tree, but with a different 
interface and different characteristics. The main difference is SPG's trees are not balanced. So in, in this tree, every um, element, every item has a single correct place to go and you, the, as the implementer, implementer of the um, access, implementer of the operator class, you choose what's the correct place but then the, the engine can't balance the tree. So some parts would be deeper and some parts would be closer. Um, it, it works better on, um, on those cases I have told just might not work very well, especially if you have many overlaps. If there, there is, for example, quad tree implementation for range types, if your ranges in a table overlaps too much, then SPGs might be a better option in there. The, the interface also supports um, kind of similar in index, indexes like prefix trees for text data type. It's, you know, they, they are kind of new. I think they were introduced in 9.3. I don't think they are too popular, but they are definitely very useful in some particular um, cases. I'm also implementing um, SPGs for network address types. I think they would work much better than uh, normal GIST index for real world scenarios like internet routing table, which has very small networks, very big networks, and really clustering them into uh, groups is not so easy. That there's a prefix tree example you, uh, for text data type that's also built in the default SPGist operator class for text. It's to index the um, elements in a table. It works like that. I hope it's clear, the example. Um, and then we have Jin. Any questions about SPGist? No? SPGist indexes don't support multiple columns, so it's not, nothing to consider about those because they just don't support. They support um, index-only scans. They, they are always lossless, and there are some um, internal features to re reconstruct the original values in, without duplicating them. And let's talk about Jin. Jin is uh, like B3, but there are multiple pointers to a single value. So a nice example is uh, arrays. If you index those three arrays, as you see, for uh, el different elements in the array, there would be multiple pointers to that, and then you can put the values in a B3, and they're optimized to execute and or conditions um, very efficiently. Um, they work well when there are many duplicates of those values. They are uh, particularly useful for text search or any kind of ve vectorized, any kind of data type which has multiple things in it, like JSON or HStore or, or arrays. Um, there, I have some examples. That PG trigram example I find particularly useful. That's um, lightweight alternative of full text search and I even more um, to, to catch spelling mistakes or something similar. It's, you can, um, it, it also has a custom operator class, so you have to create the extension and then specify the operator class to get your index um, using this operator class. And then you can speed up even regular expression searches. How cool is that? I think PostgreSQL is the only database that can use indexes on regular expression searches, and that can be quite useful. In my workplace, for, exa for example, we are um, doing some analysis on the HTTP, incoming HTTP request to detect known um, security issues, and there are um, well-maintained regular expressions to detect those issues, and, but it was quite hard to um, do those processing per every request, and um, this feature was quite useful to, to get 
search to things. Um, how, how it works is I have drawn something similar like that. So it, it's the name coming from three grams, so three character groups. It uh, splits all the uh, three character groups in, in text. It, it, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's a simplified version. And then also puts them to an ordered tree, uh, still multiple pointers to the items. And the incoming queries calculate those same three grams and then do overlapping search and find the values. It's simple, quite efficient. Gene indexes are kind of um, bigger most of the time and they are um, harder to maintain. But if you have, um, they, they also have a feature called fast updates, so you can delay the maintenance of the index to vacuum time. Some people say it's faster. I mean, the name suggests it's faster, it's fa fast updates. But some say it's much worse. I think it can work well if you tune it properly. So that's PG Trigram. There is HStore extension. It's um, like JSON, but only supports text and not nested values. It's um, quite useful and can um, be indexed using HStore, uh, using GIN. Also with GIST, but GIN is uh, way more useful for uh, such data types. There is JSON B and um, Gin operator classes are included. I think there are two of them in core with slightly different characteristic characteristics. Mm. There is L3 extension. Does anybody ever seen or use this extension? It's it's in Contrib. L3. It's also quite old from same guys who developed HStore. Anybody? Nice. It's I, I think it's very useful. To be, because you often have, um, get category structures, like the example in here, and it's kind of a, becomes hard to use when you design a schema which um, references itself. This solves it very nicely, and it comes with indexing support. In, in this, in, for this data type, I, I would think GIST would be more useful than GIN because you are likely to search for elements in the um, higher category than some random category in the middle. But yeah, it's a, you can give it a try. It also works with text and it has a whole bunch of operators to query things under different categories. Um, next, I have block range index. Any questions uh, about GIN, GIN indexes? Okay. Mm. Brin block range indexes are a brand new one in 9.5. Are you using 9.5 already? Does, are, have you upgraded your databases? Cool. <laughs> uh, it's, those are very, very lightweight and uh, designed to index very big tables without um, much overhead, without almost any overhead. Um, it, it works on the um, natural order of the table. So the table, that, that the values end up in the end of the table, usually, if you don't have space in between. So in, in, in many cases, you you would have a natural correlation between um, the values, the order of the index and the or natural order of the table. I, I haven't mentioned that, but correlation of the table between the table and the index actually matters for all indexes. Because when you choose bitmap index scan, planner decides on that and the indexes get way more efficient if the table is correlated um, with the index. But for Brin, it, they are the only properties of the index. If you don't have correlation, like if you have an example like this, then the index would store minimum and maximum values on every range. And then you can, when you search for one, it would scan all the ranges, find the matching ones, and then find your value in there. 
But if you don't have an ordered value like something like this, then index would be useless because then all, all the ranges would match the condition and there is not much benefit of having the index. Luckily, there is not much, not much uh, harm done having that index either because it's really lightweight. Other than not having heap only tuple updates at the moment, maybe, maybe that restriction would also be lifted in the future. It's, um, it has options to specify um, pages per range. I think the default is 128, which is quite high. If, um, because it's an index designed for big tables, but some smaller values might be also useful. Um, so that was minimum maximum implementation and it's also uh, designed in extensible way. So it's possible to provide indexing support for different more, co more complicated data types using this uh, framework. Um, I have an example about points, for example, if you have natural ordering of points in a table, then you can index them still with, bit, uh, with Brin, and um, then the bounding boxes on every um, page would be stored in the uh, Brin pages. Mm, it's also supported for uh, range types, uh, yes. So summary, I have mentioned those five. B3 is the default one, only option for unique indexes, probably the fastest one amongst all if, if your <laughs> operator is supported, but it's just not an option if you have complicated data types. Then you can use GIST uh, for containment like searches, more complicated operations. It supports a nearest neighbor search um, SPGIST is um, different implementation. It, it's um, non-overlapping non by, um, and it's, it can be uh, useful in some niche cases depending on what you are indexing. I, I have heard, for example, it's useful, I, or maybe that's an example in the documentation, that it's useful to index telephone numbers which have common prefixes things like that. Um, Jin is, um, has multiple pointers per row. It's very useful for full text search, um, very useful to index uh, data types which has multiple things in it. It stores duplicates efficiently. It, it sometimes even be beneficial to use Jin for using the B3 Jin extend, extension for normal scalar data types. If you have read-only workload, then that can be a better alternative to B3 sometimes. And Brin is the one for ordered, naturally ordered data. It's very tiny index. Yeah, that was all. And uh, the recent developments about different index access methods uh, is that on 9.6 there is extensible index access methods. So all the access methods were extensible before to, to implement gene support for different types, for example. But with 9.6, those methods themselves are also accessible. So it's, it's um, possible to provide to totally different new access methods without putting them into the core. There is a create access method statements and the, all, all the infrastructure to make indexes work. And there's actually a new one in the country called Bloom Indexes, implementing Bloom um, algorithm. I, I don't quite know what, in, what, in which cases it can be useful, but it's, um, I'm sure we will see much more um, the implementations in the future as extensions. So that was all. Um, any questions? Sorry, I couldn't hear. Uh, yes. So uh, there, there are no, not multi-dimensional geometric types 
I think there's cube, but not more, a lot more dimensions um, in the core PostgreSQL, but it should be possible. I, I believe uh, the PostGIS project has those data types and they support Gini, uh, nearest neighbor search on those uh, values. So you can look into that. The geometric types on the built-in PostgreSQL is um, not much useful. I mean, for may maybe very simple cases, they can be useful, but they are m more like there for to demonstrate indexing possibilities. Post just makes better use of them. Any other questions? So thank you very much, Emra.